find out about an, a, a family that was seriously in chains. But before we go with that, um, am I good? I get, I'm good, okay. Um, I want to, first of all, take the opportunity to thank everyone for being here at Highest Praise Tabernacle this Sunday night. And for those of you that are viewing us live, we do always want to acknowledge that people say, what do you believe in? We believe in the Bible. From front to back, we believe in it for living it, preaching it, and teaching it to our, our families and our children as well. And we'd love for you to come join us anytime. We would love to have you. And on that note, I would like to make a mention for those that are listening as well. On the second and the fourth Sunday nights of each month, we have our evening service on the second and fourth and we, at six. And we'd like, you, like for you to come join us as well. Well, there was a family out there, out there, you can tell I'm from the country, that had a problem. They, um... They had gone somewhere and gotten involved in a certain city and a place, and, and, and God had given them a warning. Has God ever given you a warning? How does God give you a warning? It's called the Holy Spirit. People call it conviction. No, and, and, no it's, it's these voices. No, it's God telling you, uh-oh, you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. You're going somewhere you shouldn't be going. And God has a way of, of trying to get hold of us. In fact, in this little story I want to share tonight, the Lord actually had to put their hand, his hand on some folks to get them to leave out of a circumstance because they refused to leave. Can God put his hand on you if he has to? Absolutely. You say, no, God ain't going to make you do nothing you don't want to do. That's true. But God's going to give you a helping hand sometimes if you're just stubborn. Anybody stubborn? Well, Lot, the man who lingered tonight, and you remember Lot. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis 19, 16 um, to begin with. And um, I just want us to, to look at, first of all, this scripture about, we're talking about the man who lingered in Genesis 19, 16. And while he lingered, the man laid hold upon his hand. Now, I want you to notice that. While he lingered. Who lingered? Lot and his whole family. But look what happened. The man laid a hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him without the city. So look, Lot was, the most people think Lot heard it and ran. No, God's messengers had to get Lot they grabbed him literally by the hand, didn't they? See, most people don't get that. They, they said, look, man, you need to leave. And they finally said, look, you don't get it. You better leave. And he probably did and said, okay, well, look, we're going to help you. Sometimes God, I'm glad God steps in and helps us, amen, with what we're going through. I, I want to, before um, we go any further, talking about Lot and how he lingered in his circumstances, um, we, there's some... Uh, a lot more stuff about Noah, Lot, and Lot's wife that kind of combined together in the New Testament. Because I read it in the Old Testament. And I want you to see how this is portrayed in the New Testament. If you will turn with me to Luke chapter 17. And Luke chapter 17 beginning with verse 27. There's, there's three or four verses there that I want just to. This actually portrays just what Lot was doing at that time. And this is in the New Testament in Luke 17. In verse 27 it says... They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Y'all remember about that time, right? You remember how Noah, was; his family was the only one saved, right? But look at how this goes along with what happened to Lot. Likewise also as it was in the days of who? See how they compared Lot and Noah? They did eat. They drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Do you see how he's telling you about how Noah and, 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 and also Noah and then also talking about Lot? The same thing happened to both of them, didn't it? How God saved that family. But also, listen, it says... But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone. So let me tell you something. What did God do to Sodom? Took them, wiped them, slam out. Have you ever seen it uh, rain fire and brimstone from heaven? I don't want to be here, and I'm not going to be here. But that's exactly what God would do 
when a nation of people refuses to listen. God's not going to keep right on putting up with what's going on in this world. God's, look, there is no excuse, no excuse that we're going to have whenever that time comes. As we even talked about how we tell people, you really need to focus on getting right with God. You, you really need to focus on putting God first on your life. People's got these excuses. Well, I, I, you know, this is a, a different time in my life, and, and I'm not ready to do this. And, and, and we're still having fun in Sodom, and, 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 and we're just not ready. And, and even with Noah, as we compared, man, you crazy. You'll be on the boat in a desert for crying out loud. There ain't no water. There's no such thing as that stuff. But you hear you are building this big boat. Can I tell you, when God tells you to do something and you don't and you, you, confuse, you refuse to listen to him, they learned one valuable lesson. He destroyed them all. He said it in the first of Luke. Now look what he said in verse 30 of Luke 17. Even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay? The Son of Man, when Jesus is revealed, so that's going to happen. He says in verse 31, In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Now notice what verse 32, those three words said. Remember Lot's wife. Okay, what did the Lord say? Look, when it's time to go, you better let go. Lord, see, the problem is we're trying to hold on to everything in this world, and that's what's keeping us from God. Just like we just learned about Noah and Lot, and also we need to focus on remembering Lot and, and the doom of Sodom. First of all, the fire and brimstone came down and rained and destroyed Sodom. But now even with all this going on, Lot lingered in Sodom during the countdown. How many of you, if, if anybody's seen the angel lately? But you think if God would send the messenger say, look, you need to leave here because I'm fixing to take this place out. How many of you would stay? I got news for you, buddy. I'd run over them getting out of that town. <laughs> uh, you know, but, you know, we, 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 we take that lightly, but here's the deal. God has been telling us the same thing since Jesus came. He said, you better be ready. You better have your bags packed. You better have your spiritual bags packed. You better be ready. He says, because when I do this time, there's not going to be a warning. See, God's already given us a warning. Jesus says, no man, no man knoweth. No man but God. Nobody knows when he's going to return. See, Solomon, they got a warning. Lot, they got a big warning. I mean, um, Noah, they got a big warning, didn't he? I mean, they sit there, drank the bud, and watched him build a boat. I mean, how much warning could you have? What you doing building a boat? God told me that he's going to take this world out and anybody that wants to ride on this boat can go with us. Okay, was that not a warning? Okay. It's just like if someone's, have you anybody ever been to the beach and, and seen dolphins and you thought they were Jaws? <laughs> ever since I saw the movie Jaws, I'd all go to the beach and I'd look and if I saw a fin, I'd eyed the water, buddy. I thought that was Jaws coming up. I had nightmares about that. It's a little, but if, if that guy gets up and that um, guard standing hollers, everybody out of the water, sharks, are you going to go out there inside to see if it's a shark? No, let me go on and tell you. It's going to be mass panic. Everybody getting out of that water, right? Well, see, God's already given us a warning. He done it in Noah's time, and he did it with Lot. He did Lot. He, he sent them a warning of destruction. But what did they do? They decided to stay. See, we underestimate the power of Satan and sin, and that's what they did. See, sin, Satan is, the, is, is all about beauty. He's all about um, taking the ugly and the bad and turning it to the good. The Bible says the good to the bad and the bad to the good. The pretty to the ugly, the ugly to the pretty. Switching everything around so that we see sin as something beautiful. Let's get real, church. If you don't believe people don't picture sin as beautiful, look on your television. Look at how they've turned every sin into just, ah, uh, it's just a compromise. It's, it's the way, it's the new way. It's, it, we, Satan has just deceived this world, and the world is just like Lot and his wife and the family. They're like, oh, there's nothing wrong with what we're doing. We're, you know, we're okay. But look, look at this first part. L notice that uh, when we look at Lot, I mean, yeah, Lot, first thing, we need to look at when Lot lingered. Lot lingered. 
Can I tell you, if you decide to stay in a sin, God might just let you stay in it. See, lingering means, what does lingering mean? You don't want to let it go. Can I tell you honestly, the reason why we stay in our circumstances is because we really don't want to let it go. Let's get real. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's why I spent half my life messed up because I really didn't want to let go of it. Why? It's because I didn't see it as bad as it was. Lot, look, look at Lot. He lingered when it was time for decisive action. God said, move. What did Lot do? He lingered. And I'm pretty sure his family had something to do with that. Man, you kidding? We just finally got, we just finally got part of this community. I mean, we fit right in. We fit right in with all the drinking, the partying, and we're having a good time. But see, Lot lingered when he should have been listening to God. When Lot lingered when his godly uncle, who was, who was Lot's uncle, told him. He lingered even when Abram had said, man, you need to get out of there. His uncle was praying for him, but Lot still lingered. Lot lingered when heavenly messengers were urging him to go. How much more urging do you need when somebody grabs you? Let's go. And, 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 but they didn't want to go. Lot lingered when judgment was imminent. When it was, he knew, they, the, the messengers told him, God's going to destroy Sodom. And Lot, a godly man, still couldn't let go of what? The world. He couldn't let go of this materialistic world that's going to pass away. See, when he knew better than to linger, he just stayed. You know, a writer once put it this way. Uh, it says, slow when he should have been quick, backward when he should have been forward, lottering, lottering when he should have been hurrying, cold when he should have been hot can i tell you something church like lot so many people are sitting back actually waiting to see if when jesus returns can i tell you something he's going to return whether you're ready or not and also as we look at lot when he lingered why why did lot linger that's that's so important we need to understand why lot lingered because the bible tells us some things that, that I, I want Everyone listening and every, every young person here to understand it. See, Lot made a wrong choice early in life. Lot made choices that affected his future that got him in the place he was in. Uh, if you will, uh, I'm going back in the book of Genesis. I just want to give you some word, God's word, on this situation with Lot. Because, see, a lot of people don't understand what led Lot to his place of destruction, that his wife was destroyed. What led him there? Listen, he, he started going away from God. In Genesis 13, turn with me to Genesis 13, if you will. And, and, and let's look at beginning in verse 5. We want to look at Lot, and we want to understand this simple question. A, a simple question is why? Why did Lot linger? And I want you to put yourself in the place of, of Lot for a minute. <clears throat> and Lot also, went, went, which went with Abram, his uncle, had flocks and herds and tents. Now, God had blessed Abram and Lot. Amen. They had big herds. They had a lot going on. And look at verse 6. And the land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Prizite dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and, and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me, for thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. If, for if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Abraham says, Look, whatever you want to do, I'll, I'll get it. Move away so that we quit having strife. You know, I, I, as I, before I go into verse 10, you notice it wasn't Abram that was having strife or Lot. It was the people they had working with them, their herdsmen. They were complaining and griping because they, oh, your cow got more grass than I got. My, 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 my sheep didn't get what your sheep got. Isn't it how funny God will start blessing people, multiplying, then they start complaining? When we've got nothing, we really don't complain. 
But all of a sudden, we start getting things, and we start complaining. So their herdsmen started complaining and, and fussing back and forth like, oh, don't you cross that line. See, when Jesus walked this earth, guess what? There wasn't barbed wire fence. There was none of this separation. Now let's look at the big farms. People put fences up not to keep, to keep the other cattle out and keep their cattle on their own land. We think we own everything. We mark off our property. This is mine, don't you? You know, the Hatfield and McCoys, don't you cross over that line? This is my stuff. In fact, I, when we lived in the country, if somebody's cow got out and went on somebody else's farm, guess what? Oh, well. Goodbye, cow. But, you know, that's what people, that's how territorial people were. And Lot was then was just like that. They were fussing over being blessed. And, and look at verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord. It was beautiful. Like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Now, I want you to understand this, that Lot, first of all, he made a decision. What was his wrong choice early in life? He chose what looked good. Oh, man, this, this place looks good. I ain't got to work hard. I've got all the water. I've got all that I need for my cattle. This place just looks wonderful. So what did he do? He went to please the eyes. He, he looked for the easy way out. He made a wrong choice. You know what he should have done? He should have stayed with Abram. He should have not tried to go out and find that perfect place. But that didn't end there. So that wrong choice he made, look how, let's just read a few more verses to show you how Lot found his fellowship with sinners. The Bible tells us how Lot decided where he wanted to go. And when he, when he went where he went, guess what happened? Stay right there in Genesis 13 and uh, look at verses 11 through 13. Look, notice what this happened. Then Lot, Chose him all the plain of Jordan. Who chose it? Lot. The leader. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Now, look right here. In 12, Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan. And Lot dwelled in the city of the plains and pitched his tent toward where? Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Did Lot, did not, Lot not know about that? Abram and them, no doubt, said, look, buddy, you, don't, you need to stay away from over yonder. All this land we got, now you want to go park over yonder in Party City. No, you need to stay over here. But see, Lot, he, he, he got out there, and he saw the, how did Satan draw him in? By the, the, by the desires of the flesh. How, Satan never draws nobody in off of the stuff that you think is bad for you. Lot draws us, I mean, Satan draws us in off the desires of the flesh, those things that, that's against God. That's what Satan does. Now, at this point, Lot has raised his family in Sodom, and Lot's treasures were in Sodom. He's done made a good life for himself. In fact, he felt too old to start over again, so Sodom was his home. And, and, and I want you to understand this. He finally, why Lot lingered, it's because he got all out there and that stuff, and and. Forgot about God, forgot about everything. Did he forget about Abram? Sure he did. Sure he did. Who had to rescue him? Abram had to come get him because why? It's because he went out there out of the will of God. See, whenever you go out there and linger in sin, Satan won't let you go. Lot stayed there. His family was raised there. His children were raised there. And, and, and like Lot, there are so many people in this world, as we kind of compare this, that are lingering like Lot. You say, well, in, in what way is this world lingering like Lot? First of all, like Lot, they know more truth than they live. Lot knew the truth, but he, he, he didn't live it. Lot was with Abram. They knew God, they talked to God, and they had a close relationship with God, right? But let me tell you what he did. He, he didn't want to live the truth. You know, the saddest thing about as we look at this with Lot and, and us, we know the truth. How many of you know what the Bible says is the truth? Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, right? No man cometh in the Father but by me. So the truth we know, but do we obey it? 
Let's just get real. Because, listen, the bottom line of it is, is, you know, we know what's right and wrong. But just like Lot, Lot knew what was right and wrong, but he didn't choose to, to live it. Not only that, look, Lot, 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 a lot of people believe in heaven, but don't long to go there. Well, I'm not ready to die yet. Is that not a statement we all make? Well, I'm not really ready to die yet. Listen, dying is, Satan has put dying in a bad category. Dying is a part of living. You don't die, you live. Right? Die is a word that the world uses because of sin. How did death come to this earth? Sin. So what's death? You have to die because of sin. So it's not what God wanted, but it's what we brought upon ourselves. So listen, we are not going to, as Christians, we're not going to die. We're just, get, we're just making a transformation. See, we, we, we look at death as the end. Well, let me tell you something. If you're living in Sodom and Gomorrah, it still ain't the end. If you're living in a life of sin, it's still not the end. Because you're still going to stand before God. And Lot, he lingered so long that he stayed in that place so long that he finally just had turned his back on God and his whole family he raised without God. And they, and they didn't believe that nothing was going to happen. But like Lot, they know, that they know time is short, but lives if it was long. How many of you believe that Jesus is coming? Is there a doubt that he's coming? There is no doubt he's coming. Because if you don't believe it, then you can't receive it. So if you know that you know that you know that he's coming again, guess what? Why aren't we living like it? You know, I want to say this, you know, and, 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 and I'm probably just as guilty as anybody else. You know, I, I'm like, Lord, I, I know I'm not doing right today, but maybe Jesus won't come back while I'm doing it. How many... I, I mean, is that not pushing the pressure button or what? Can you imagine Lot said, hey, look, Lord, I, I, I appreciate the warning, but I'm not really ready to go yet because there's some stuff we've got to take care of before we can pack up and leave Sodom. Can I tell you, God's not going to reach out there and snatch you out of this. He's already sent Jesus. He's not going to do anything else. He's going to give you everything that you need, and he's already given us everything we need, and we better start living like we're ready to go home. People say, well, well I, I, I think that the Lord's done waited over 2,000 years to come, and, and, and he's probably going to wait 2,000 more years to come. Well, if you know anything about the Bible, it's all, most of it's been fulfilled. If you know anything about Israel, and you know anything about what's taking place in Israel as we speak right now, it's already been prophesied. Everything has already been taken care of in the Bible. So a lot like them, we know our time is short. But let's get real. We don't live like it. Now, like Lot, um, they built their lives around things below. Why did, so why did Lot not want to leave Sodom? Because he had so much of the world. He See, like Lot, a lot of people are building their lives around things below. You know, a true Christian doesn't build their life on the things below. They built their life on things above. You will, I don't care what architect you hire. You get the best money can buy. He can't build you a mansion like Jesus has already built us. I mean, you know, hey, look, and not only Jesus has built us a mansion. Is that what he said? I go to prepare a place for you, right? Okay, if he's prepared a place for us, do you think he, when you show up in heaven, he's going to say, here's your light bill. Here's your taxes. Here's your water bill, your phone bill. Here, here's all this stuff. No. Here, here's your doctor you're going to be using. No. See, why, why are we putting our faith in the things below and more security in that? You know, than we are what God's already done for us. See, we, we linger in a place that, that we shouldn't be lingering. You know what? I am going to be so glad when he calls us home. Some people say, well, I won't know nobody there. That's not true. If you know the transfiguration, let me tell you something. When Jesus, who Jesus met on Moses, he met Moses and um, Elijah. Who? Elijah. Elijah. Did he know him when he met him? Well, now, how can that be? I mean, for crying out loud, Jesus hadn't even been born yet when they were here. 
Hey, I got a better one for you. You don't think they don't know who you are? How, how did Peter know who they were? Did he meet them before? I doubt it. Not unless Peter's about two or 3,000 years old. I doubt it. But see, we, we will know each other. When Jesus came back from the grave, did he not know them? Did they not know him? See, we're going to know each other. But we're going to have that spiritual glorified body. You hear me? No cancer. Okay? We're going we're gonna to be in heaven. We're going to have an, an eternal eternal mansion, eternal life. We're going to live forever and ever and ever. So why did Lot get his eyes off of what God had already told him? He already knew about all this stuff. But why did he get his eyes off of it? Because Satan is all about, let me tell you what Satan does. He draws you away from God. He, he, Satan, how does Satan do it? He draws us away from the church. He draws us away from serving God. He draws us away from reading the Bible. He draws us away by getting us focusing on the world. See, we need to get our eyes off of the world. First of all, let me tell you something. I, all your worry and all your stress is not going to change what's going on in this world. Your faith is what changes, not your fear. When we put our faith and trust in Almighty God, we won't linger around. You know what? Guess what? Every time you think that you've got it, everything straightened out, Satan will throw something else at you. He'll never stop throwing these darts at you. But when you stop lingering around and say, hey, look, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. His word tells us, don't be lingering around. Don't be grabbing this world. Don't be holding on nothing. He says, what I've got is better. God would do, in fact, better if we just trust him right now. You know what? If Lot would have just said, if Lot would have raised his family with the Lord, his wife wouldn't have had to die. You can't blame his wife because Lot, Lot was the leader. He led that whole crowd. Let me ask you a question. How many did them messengers pull out of Sodom? Lot, his wife, and his two children. All right, here's something for you to think about. What happened to everyone else that was with Lot? Lot had a crowd. Lot had just as many as Abram did. What happened to them? Because of the leader making bad decisions, he took the whole crowd with him. See, can I tell you, it is, there's supposed to be a spiritual leadership in, in us. And that means that, you know, his wife didn't have to die. Why did she turn back and look at, at what she was missing? Because he showed her the wrong way to go. See, can I tell you something, church? We got to show the people the way to go. We can't tell them, oh, well, don't worry about that. It's God's going to forgive you. Just keep on living. Just whenever you decide to come back to him, he'll be ready. That's true. But you never know when that time's going to run out. See, Lot lingered and not only destroyed his wife, he destroyed a lot of people. See, we need to focus on this because we live in a world right now that Christianity is taking the back seat to every other religion out there. We're living in a country now that Christianity, we got to hire lawyers just to say what we think. We're living in a society right now that, that, that is slowly setting up Solomon and Gomorrah all over again. And I got news for you. Just like Lot, there's going to be a time when he's going to shut that down. They, they built their lives around these things below. They understand the battle, but consort with the enemy. Lot knew the battle. He knew that Almighty God was in charge of this battle, and he knew who was going to be defeated. But who did Lot choose to stay with? The enemy. See, whenever we get in sin, all of a sudden we forget about God. Sin, Satan uses sin. He seeks out to destroy us by sin. And we get so used to sin that here's the bottom line. We just forget about God. See, just like Lot, you know, 
they didn't understand about the battle. We, we understand about the battle. How many of you know that we, there's a battle going to happen here? Do you know the Bible says that there's going to be a battle? And you know what? If, if you know Jesus Christ and, and you head out at that call, you're going to come back and help do the battle. But guess what? And I, I hope everybody hears this. If you linger... And you stay in your circumstances like Lot. And you, and you, make, your, you, you make your bed hard and lie, as they, so to speak, in Sodom. Let, let me go on and, and tell you something. Everybody is using this. Well, if Jesus does return, then I'll know he's real and I'll get my life straight. Let me go on and tell you something right now. If you know anything about the Bible and you know anything about Satan or anything, let me tell you something. If you don't go out now... And you decide you're going to hang around and, and stay in Sodom and, and live a good life. And, and then whenever the explosion takes place, you're going to get out. You, it's not going to happen. Because he says, if you don't do it now, whenever the time comes, Satan's going to be let loose. I want you to hear this. Whenever the Lord calls us and raptures, guess what? Those that's left behind, it says, oh, man, I was this close to leaving. Like, like Lot's wife, she was this close to leave him, but she turned back. She turned back just one, she had to have one more glimpse of that mess and it destroyed her. See, let me tell you something. That's the way it works with God. Whenever that rapture takes place, these people that were that close, Lot, Lot's wife, those that are that close, here's what's gonna happen. When Satan is let loose, uncontrolled the churches is going to be destroyed it, the, the, the christians is all going to be gone let me tell you what satan's going to do he's going to spend a small period of time winning you over and then if you don't accept his mark and you don't accept him he will destroy you people say well i'll just accept jesus then let me tell you something what you won't do and somebody needs i heard a minister saying this one time years ago you know what if you don't accept, accept jesus when it's free you won't accept it when it costs you your life Amen. see a lot of people say well pastor that that sounds hard and cruel for a, a message on Sunday night, but let me tell you what Satan will do. Satan does not care about us. He just wants to destroy us. He seeks out the destruction of us. And if he can get you and keep you from going that first trip, he knows right then, okay, see, they were so weak that they didn't even leave what I offered them before this happened. Now I will make sure they don't. Someone told me one time, says, well, I, I believe that I, if, you know, if I see this happen, then I believe I'll get ready. I said, no, you won't. I said, because Satan will use your children. He will use everything he can that if you don't take his mark, he will destroy other people. Satan won't just come after you. He'll come after everybody that you know and love and care about. That's why, see, lingering in, in this world is something that we got to tell people. Just like I love what Rose said while ago, you, you, you got you to gotta say, you know, you, you really need to focus on serving the Lord. You really need to focus on being ready. Because, listen, because when that time comes, a lot of people, they're going to say, well, I love Christ, but, but I don't live for him. Let me tell you what the Bible says. Faith for that works is, listen, if you really love Christ, why don't you want to serve him? Why wouldn't you want to serve Christ? People say, well, I love the Lord. I don't have to go to church to be saved. Well, that's very true. You don't have to go to church to be saved, but why wouldn't you? Not forsaking the assembling yourselves together. I know what the Bible says about the church. So, but if you really love someone, why not serve them? I love my wife, even though I aggravate her. But let me tell you what I, I do. I would give my life for her right now without a split thought. Okay, so if, 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 we truly love God, which we're supposed to love first. If we truly love him, why do we keep hurting him by lingering? Why do we keep hurting him by allowing sin to come in? Think about somebody you love, truly love. Then think about you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do anything to hurt them, would you? How about our grandchildren or our, our children? Man, look, we love them so much we would protect them with our life, right? Well, see, that's what God wants us to do. He wants to protect us. And he gives Jesus to protect us. But yet, what is he asking us to do? Quit lingering. Quit staying around. Quit focusing on, on what this world is. God, God, doesn't, um, God does have part to keep 
God does his part to keep us from destruction. All he's asking us to do is to realize the gospel. We need to have the gospel, and we need to believe it. Christ died and rose again. You've got to believe it. Also, the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins. That's what the Holy Spirit does. God's servants plead with people to believe. Stop lingering. Neither time nor death nor judgment linger. Let me tell you something. You all might have your, your life planned out in closing. You might have had this. You've got your retirement plan out but well, let me tell you something time is, is either here or gone it's death you have no time and judgment no linger we need to decide for Christ and we need this nation needs to understand something we need to decide for Christ before it's too late one of the biggest things that Billy Graham ever did and Billy Graham boy did he preach the simple message if you ever seen Billy Graham's crusades he preached the same thing over and over and over. Nobody had no problem knowing Billy Graham didn't come there to, to, to put on the show. Billy Graham told every single person there. He says, if you don't know Jesus Christ, he preached salvation. Because, see, he knew that that day that he was given was the one he's got. Every one of you right here and every one of you listen. This is the day that everybody needs to say, you know what? I'm going to stop lingering. Because just like Lot, if you linger, God will show up and you won't be ready. That's what the world needs to hear. That's what we need to tell. Look, just like Rose and I talk, that's what we need to tell our, our grandchildren, our children. We need to tell them. The, there's, our, our young people are not stupid. They're just looking for somebody to tell them straight up truth. And the reason why our young people are switching over to different occults and different practices is because we're not telling them the truth. If you tell a child, look, don't go out there right now. I'm see, I see a shark in that water. I mean, he's a killer shark. Would they go? I don't think so. I don't think none of you would just say, oh, well, let me go out there and look at him. You wouldn't get in that water for nothing. So why don't we tell, teach them about Jesus? Why don't we say, look, doing this is going to separate you from God. Don't you want our children, don't you want our loved ones to go to heaven with us? Well, guess what? Lot lingered, and he lost his wife. Lot lingered, and he lost everybody that followed him. Lot lost because he lingered. And we need to realize that we don't need to linger. You know what? I, I, my wife, everybody picks on him whenever she talks to him. She, it, her, word of the, no matter who her family is, she'll start preaching to him. Now you say, why? It's because she knows that by them lingering. Now here's something that I'm going to say and I'm going to close this study. Do you know the Bible says there'll be no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more pain. Do you know what that means? That means that if somebody you've known all your life and they didn't accept Jesus Christ, you will not know them in heaven. Because if you did, if you knew somebody that didn't get to heaven, you'd be sorrowful. So what am I telling you? Everybody that you don't reach for Jesus, that you claim to love, you won't see them when you leave this earth. Does that not bother somebody? You think that's, do you know why that's why I went to my daddy when he was dying? And I made it a point to talk to him even after his stroke that he had this year. You know, I, I, I finally realized that this is my last chance to tell him before it's too late. Because guess what? If my daddy don't accept Jesus, I won't know him in heaven. I won't know he existed. So next time you look at your friends and you say, oh, you're my friend. You're my best friend. I just love you. And, uh, but don't tell me about Jesus. You're not a friend. A true friend will tell people about Jesus. Amen. Let's pray.